Hi, everybody. Are you having a good time? Yeah. I'm having a really good time. <laughs> this is really fun. Uh, not only am I having fun, but it's just such an honor and privilege to be here and be part of this. And so I'm just going to spend the next 15 minutes to give you a little bit of why I was very kindly invited to participate in this. Uh, have, I hope most of you have visited the Ode to Color exhibit on the other end, and if you haven't, I hope that you'll go afterwards. There's a lot to see and a lot to digest, and I don't want to give it all away, so I'm just going to give you a little teaser about it. But before I do, just a little bit of background on who I am, context. Uh, textile designer, uh, designing lots of products for interior spaces, both commercial and residential. I uh, work not too far from here in a studio in Chelsea. I call it the White Box Sanctuary. Why? Because it's all white. Um, with the exception of all that we're working on and cooking, which is, can be all kinds of materials and all kinds of colors. If you'll see here in the conference room, I organize my books by the color jackets. And I didn't always, but I could never find the book I wanted. But then when I started to organize it by color, I could always find the book I wanted, which is when I realized color was my first language. And from that, I uh, became a textile designer. And in this studio, which we call the Creative Tank, and that is my gorgeous team, we are painting, we are drawing, we are sketching, we are sewing, we are making things in all kinds of crazy ways because what's really important to me is that we're using our hands. And of course we use technology eventually, but I like to start with the hand because I believe that's where the soul of things come from. We're even plating and using all kinds of materials. And these things we create will become a product. Perhaps it's stone, perhaps it's fabric for, for furniture, perhaps it just becomes art and it never ends up being a product for sale but something we love and we put on our pin board. So these are the kinds of things that we do and we are working with color. And in a way, color is the thing that starts the story in most of the products we're working on, but it's certainly not the complete story. I like to talk it in an, about it in a synesthetic way, as you'll see in the exhibit. It's not just what color looks like, but it's how it makes us feel. And what I've learned over the years is that color is one of the most powerful tools we have for wellness, for mood, mood enhancing, for calming, for energizing, for evoking memories. It's very powerful, and yet, most people don't really think of it that way. So my goal is to get you to think about it, and not only think about it that way, but how can you utilize it in what you're doing every day in creating big spaces, big events that people will be coming to? How can we use this tool in a more powerful way? So to begin with, I'll just talk about the fact that how the senses interact. And what you'll also see in the exhibit is scent and music even taste from this beautiful dinner last night that these incredible chefs created are inspired by these worlds of color, which I'll get to. Think about if you're immersed in nature, how you might feel. I just look at that picture and I start to feel uh, heal, healing and calm. So that brings me to the book that I wrote a few years ago called Ode to Color, which is exactly what the title says. It's an honoring of color in all its ways. And it is 10 chapters, 10 color worlds that I created that are personal to me, that may resonate with you. Some you may hate, some you may love, some you may be indifferent to. I invite you to come up with your own as well. But get it started, get it going, ignite with seeing which ones you do respond to. I am going to give you just a little tasting of each now and then invite you to obviously do a deep dive in the exhibit. This is Waterside, and I'm not going to say much about it. I'm just going to show you the pictures. This is called Silverlight. This is called Garden Party. This is called Night Shadows. I like to say Night Shadows. <laughs> I can also apply voice, actually, to these in the way I say them. This is Whisper. These are the Whisper colors. These are the Out Loud colors. 
And these are the at ease colors. Passion, these are earthly colors. Alchemy, we're using a lot of that word these last few days. And finally, fragrant woods, my personal favorite. So, these are the color worlds that evoke different feelings. And what I've done for you, because you guys are creating spaces for events, for where people are coming together, is an example of how you can use these in a way that will make sense and affect your audience in profound ways. So here are a few examples. Alchemy, which is all about the warm metals, the gold. How do we feel? This is the palette that I have for that. But how do we feel when we're in a space that has these elements of gold? We feel special. We feel like we're in an expensive luxury space where we are king or queen. We are noble. We are treated well. So when you want people to feel that way in a space, you've got to put some of those warm metal golds in there. Part of the alchemy world for me is the sun. And it's really important, for natural light. It makes a really big difference. And a lot of these big spaces, especially where there are conferences, there's not a lot of natural light. And as much as you can play with artificial light, which I'll get to, natural light and natural sunlight pouring on us is, is a magnificence that is important to feel depending on what you want to do in your invent. I also want to talk about this world as it relates to creativity and enlightenment. If you have an audience that you want to think more creatively, this is also a very good world to have around you. Just have a few examples here. I put this in here because I say there's, there's certainly a reason why countries fought over the ownership of this beautiful work. And when you see it in real life and you see the real gold leaf glisten, you understand, maybe not in t intellectually, but you understand on a visceral level why this makes you feel a certain way. Certainly beautiful frescoes and religious spaces relate to enlightenment and miracles like the honeybee. So this is all the world of alchemy and you can think about how you can integrate that into spaces that you are working with in your space. This is my favorite image from that. So now I'm gonna give you just two other examples. My favorite, Fragrant Woods. A lot of conferences, a lot of events, a lot of just people are talking about sustainability in every way. So why not utilize those kinds of worlds and color in your spaces? So this is the palette. It's a lot of these deep greens. I call them the cool earth colors, not the hot earth. The hot earth is a different color world called earthly. But the cool earth is nurturing from your legs all the way up, and it's healing, and it's connecting you to the earth. It is connecting you to nature. It's inner work, and it's giving. And so it also relates to how we connect to others and how we connect to things in our past, like memories. Having old things around us that have stories to tell would be important. In my industry of interior designers and architects, they are using reclaimed wood all the time. Why? Why not just wood, new wood? Obviously, there's an environmental aspect, but it's also because these tell stories. They've been somewhere before. They have secrets to share with us. So bring some of those used older pieces in to tell stories in your space. And of course, how about the real thing? Why not? Why not take people forest bathing if it's possible? And if you can't forest bathe in the forest, maybe there's a way to bring the forest in. All of these things will connect your audience to nature in really visceral ways. I love this image too. And this is where I want to get married if I renew my vows someday. And last ex example is Out Loud. I screamed before, Out Loud. Out Loud is a color world that's celebratory and very bold and very courageous. You want people to speak up. You want people to ask questions in an event. Get some of this color in those spaces. Don't do too much, though. Too much of a good thing is too much. It can make you a little, it could make you nauseous. You don't want that for your audience. But you, ha you have to know the right balance, as we do in everything. We've talked a lot about balance this conference as well. Um, this is the palette. As you can see, it's super, super highly saturated. And it's the, the, the main palette that um, 
Interestingly, I don't work with a lot in my work for interiors, but I recently did a fabric that was with very strong colors like that, and a chemo center wanted it for all over. And I said, why? Why are you putting a chemo center? Don't people want quiet colors when they're healing? No, they need the energy. So it's a color world of energy as well. You can do it with light. We talked about light a little bit before. Light is very powerful for events. There's a way to shift lighting in so many different ways to create so many different moods. Again, as we saw last night in this beautiful dinner that we did. Um, you're thinking, what is Snow White doing up there? This is an example of Out Loud. Walt Disney mortgaged his house for half a million dollars in 1938 because he needed to finish this film and nobody believed that people would watch two-hour animated film. That is what Out Loud is about. And if you should get that as a result when you take my color test, that means go for it. You need more color to make you take that step that you're afraid to take. Go bold, be courageous, speak out, and don't worry about what anybody thinks. Sonia Delaunay certainly didn't when she painted in Paris. And Dr. Seuss says it best. You all decide where to go. You, you are the guy. So this is the world of Out Loud. And again, it's for celebration. It's for when you want a conference or an event where people will feel maybe less shy to talk to each other. And just some beautiful examples of how you can use them. So I put this here to say that I talk a lot about color and my color worlds, but the important thing to remember is colors react differently on different people. We are all different. We are all personal. We learned yesterday afternoon all about that. So what's really important is to find what colors work for you. There are some generals to it, but there are also specifics. So throwing out some really simple ones, just like these tricks of the trade and design that you might want to utilize in some of your event spaces is change out pillows. Have very neutral, neutral pieces of furniture, but then be able to change out the pillows to colors that make sense for what you're trying to do or achieve. P things on wheels, furniture, and room dividers. Move them around, easy, quick. And then this one is really old fashioned. My mom used to have slip covers, but you know what? There's something kind of cool that you can change the upholstery of a fabric like that. And you can go from something like this, which would be in my at ease color world, and put it into red, and it becomes something very different. And believe me, people in that space will feel very different about it. And this is just an example. You guys probably know better than me about lighting per se, but how just by the lighting, you can make such a difference in how you feel in a space. And you can control and create the colors through lenses of different kinds. And finally, as far as tips go, um, put things up and put things up in a way that they can be moved easily. This happens to be a magnetic wall covering that we have. You can put it up one day and take it down the rest or in the evening. Um, it's also a communal way for people in an event to be part of something, sort of like what's going on in the loom behind here that I love. So think about how you can have spaces that can easily change and where people can participate in them in a communal way. I have a color test, and in my space, you'll see there are three iPads where you can take the color test. It's 18 questions. It's quick, it's easy, and it's fun. And it's not perfect, but it's really an interesting indicator as to what color world or worlds might be most appropriate for you to have in your interior. And what I'd like to say about that is it's not what you like necessarily or what you have, it's what you need. And that brings me back to my point, which is color. Think about color and the synesthetic applications to color in all its possibilities, but how it's very personal and how it can work for each of you. So thank you.